Good morning everybody, Victor here. If you guys are new to the channel, welcome aboard. I'm with my good buddy Johnny Stabile today. What's up guys? And we are fishing the beautiful Indian River. And we're gonna be targeting a fish that I normally don't fish for, but I'm super excited to show you guys, and that is the sheep's head. These are these freaky looking fish. Just wait till you see their teeth. We're gonna have a great day today. We got fiddler crabs on the boat, which is a bait I've never even fished with before. I'm just excited about that. Let's get to it. So we've arrived at our final destination. We took about a five mile run up north. We're in the middle of the Indian River and there's these power lines that run from east to west. Now, sheep's head are very structure oriented fish. Um, they're always by barnacles, docks, pilings, bridges. And that is because that's where their forage is. On the actual pilings of this bridge, there's gonna be little crabs and shrimp that live on it. And as the tide comes up and down, it'll actually eat the little creatures off of that. So that's what we're gonna be imitating. Wano Mustad Beak Hook. Pretty small hook because these guys are tricky to hook. They got really small mouths. Well, not, I shouldn't say small mouth, but they don't have a lot of a soft part of their mouth in which to hook them. I got a little split shot. You know when you were first a kid and like every single new species you caught, you were just so excited and I never want to lose that excitement. And I want to show you guys that. For me, when I fish a new bait or a new species, I get that like same feeling. They're not too big. They usually have one big pincher, one small pincher. This guy's only got two small pinchers, but that's what sheep's head like. And the reason I really wanted to get these guys as bait is they'll eat a shrimp just as well, but when you're fishing a live shrimp, everything eats a live shrimp. So we really want to pinpoint these sheep's head. The first fiddler I showed you guys had two small claws. Look at this one. This guy's got a pretty big pincher right there. I don't really know if it hurts. Let's see. He's not even trying to pinch me, so <laughs> I don't really know. Okay, so I want to go right here, kind of on the side of the crab. And anytime you hook any crab, whether it's a blue crab, sand flea, anything, they got a, it's a tough shell, but it cracks really easily. So you really want to wiggle that hook in there. I don't like to go in there aggressively. And you know, just right there on the side, not right through the middle. That probably looks really good under the water, him wiggling like that. Remember when I told you those power lines were gonna be so good for sheep's head? Guess how many we caught there? Zero. So we actually got back in the truck and Johnny's like, Vic, let's go to my sheep's head spot. So we're at a spot where Johnny's caught him before, probably 20 miles south of where we started. It's uh, the middle of the day and we have zero sheep's head, but guess what? This guy is staying positive. All right, guys, as we're waiting here on a bite, got to give a huge shout out to Waterland Co. They've been a sponsor on the channel for a few months now. Absolutely love their sunglasses. I'm rocking the blue glass Millikens. You guys can find them linked below. You can actually save 15% off. Use my code Landshark. I'm telling you right now, I've worn a lot of sunglasses in my life and I love these things. So check them out, linked below. Just like the bridge, sheep's head like structure because all those crabs and crustaceans that hang out on the pilings, you'll see the sheep's head just kind of come up and just scoop them up off the piling. I don't know, man, something is stealing my bait, but I don't know if it's a sheep's head or I keep getting stuck on something. That's where I got my last bite right there. Go back and forth all day. There's a fish. There is a fish. Oh, we got the target species, boys and girls. It is not a monster, but it's a start. Can you tell I'm excited? Victor, I'm just happy that for once you took my advice and it paid out. <laughs> I always take your advice. Probably undersized, so we're gonna let him go. I'm gonna unhook him. But very beautiful fish. You know what? This guy is hooked so deep that I would do more damage if I tried to unhook him than just letting him go, because that hook will definitely come out of him. I've caught so many fish in my lifetime with the hooks in them and their bellies and their stomachs. If you're yanking on that hook and it's in his guts, that's honestly gonna do more damage than good. 
So I want to keep that crab as still as possible and that sheep's head's just coming out to investigate. And this is a real finesse type fishery. I can barely see my rod tip moving and I can feel him tapping that crab. But like I said, this is not a ferocious big grouper hit or something. You're really, really trying to finesse these fish. You're trying to just slightly bury that hook in their mouth. And just like that, see? In that short amount of time I was talking, they robbed me. Moonfish? No. It's a look down. What? What a unique fish. That will sell anywhere from 30 to $100 in an aquarium shop. Wow, pretty cool. Yeah, I think that there's a lot of either really small sheep's head here and they're just kind of picking around the hook or there's a lot of bycatch because we're getting our shrimp and our uh, crabs just picked way too clean. So just like I said earlier, just keep moving up and down until you find that school of bigger fish. Well, at least we got the, uh, the stench off the boat, right? All those oysters and barnacles and stuff, there's living animals inside of there. And there's also crabs that will live in and around those barnacles. And like I was saying, the sheep's head will wait for the tide to either rise or drop and it'll expose certain parts of those barnacles and they'll feed on that. And you see they have a perfectly adapted mouth to feed on those hard, basically something like a rock. And all we're doing is we're pushing it up against the piling and I want to be as close to it as possible because I'm sure they're roaming around here, but ideally they're right on the piling itself. Oh shoot, I think I got one. Oh yeah, buddy. That's going to be a good one, Dennis. Uh-huh. What did I say, boys? Let's go to the bridge. Let's go to the bridge. Watch it be a barracuda. It's not a barracuda on a crab, dude. It's gonna be a, that's gonna be a keeper sheep's head right there. I tell you what. First drop, baby. First drop. Let's see what the hype's all about. Oh, it's a big sheep! Get the net! Get the net! I'm not kidding, it's a nice sheep. Have, I don't have a net. You, we, we want sheep's head fishing and we have no net. Just grab it. Do you want me to Dude, grab it for you? Dude, that's a good one. Dude, that does slow. That is a stud. It? Do you want me to grab it? Where's the bait net? Right I don't know. I'll grab it for you if you want. Here, let me grab it. I am kind of in disbelief right now. This is, this is everything I imagined. Are we in Alabama right now? Oh my God, that thing dude. is huge. Dude, that thing is huge. That's a thumbnail fish right there. Johnny, I'm gonna kiss you if you get them, but I'm gonna not kiss you if you lose, lose them. Dude, what about the bucket? Put him in the bucket, scoop him with the bucket. I got it, I got it, I got it. Get, get it, bring me his head. Bring me his head, bring me his head, bring me his head. Oh, dude. Barely hooked, barely hooked. Get him in the boat, get him in the boat. Yeah! <laughs> Look at that thing! All right, we got ourselves a dinosaur. Look at this thing, guys. Oh my goodness. You know, the day started out super slow, but guess what? We went to about 10 different spots and we got ourselves a nice big sheep's head. Look at this thing. Oh my gosh, look at that mouth. Look at those just snaggly teeth. That is a wicked looking fish. And like I said, so they, they got a pretty big mouth, but they don't have a lot of area in which you can really hook them because there's, it's so hard everywhere. So I got them just here on the outside of the lips. This guy's being super stubborn. He doesn't really want to open. Look at that. Look at how gnarly that is. He's got a mouth made for crushing. So you guys, look at that. This guy it almost looks like corn kernels is what they look like. They got these crazy looking mouths that are used for crushing up mana shrimp, crabs, oysters. They will literally go up and they have the jaw power to break open oysters and they'll eat all the good stuff on the inside. And you see, there's very few spots in their mouth that you could actually physically get the hook in. Like right here, it's kind of soft. On here, it's kind of soft. And you got the outside lips. But they're so good at stealing your bait 
because there's just not a lot of area for you to hook them unless you unless they swallow it but that is a beautiful um, first keeper sheep's head they get this real yellow tint to them um, with their stripes they're kind of yellow and black and depending on I don't know if it's their life cycle sometimes they'll be super pale but a lot of times they'll get this nice yellow tint to them very cool fish and uh, I think we'll have some success if we stick it out here but we got dinner already oh Oh, dude, that was a good fish, huh? That was a nice fish. Pulled the hook. Johnny's been doing YouTube for what, a year now? Two years. Two years. Yep. So if you guys would do me a favor, do Johnny a favor, in the description box below, go check out Johnny's channel. He's my real good bud. He posts a lot of great videos, and he would really appreciate if you guys went over and subscribed. And he's done a lot for me, so, you know. Thanks, Vic. Just trying to share the love. And thank you guys at home for watching both of our videos. There's a fish. There's a fish. Man, they just sit there and they sleep on it. Oh, baby. So, if you guys don't know what this is, this is called a checkered puffer fish right here. And watch what he's about to do. Check this out. Oh, yeah, baby. You give him a little belly rub and he blows up just like that. So, that's his defense mechanism. If something tries to eat him, that'll probably get lodged in their throat and makes it really hard to eat. And he'll stay inflated, I think, for as long as he needs to. Um, these guys, don't let them fool you. They look cute. These are vicious. If you've ever had one of these guys in your fish tank, they will rip your fish to shreds. And the reason for that, they got some wicked teeth, just like a sheep's head. Um, these guys love crabs and crustaceans as well. And they're actually very delicious. I've done one catch and cook on them. The way you eat them is actually really, really unique. There's like just one center bone and you kind of eat them like a drumstick. They're the drumsticks of the sea. But when I first started fishing, I didn't know that their teeth were so bad. And I remember as a kid, I think I was like 11 years old, I stuck my finger in there. I tell you what, that guy drew blood. They got some wicked little chompers. So be very careful if you're ever fishing and your kids grab a hold of these, don't let them near their mouth because they will bite you. Uh-huh. It's a buffer. What? Little mangrove snapper. These guys have wicked little teeth on them too. Definitely don't want to be sticking your finger in their mouth. Look how dark he is too. Yeah. It's a very dark one. Ah, uh, what is it? Something small. What the? Oh, it's another puffer. We're in the puffers now, boys and girls. Oh man. See? Let's give him a little belly rub. It's crazy how big they'll blow up. They really are cool looking fish. They got this little green eyeball and a bunch of orange around it. Very beautiful. Or is it? Oh <gasps> my gosh. Oh, you caught him big mahara. Big mahara. This is like when you search snook candy online, this is what this is what comes up right here. This is snook candy. And supposedly they taste pretty good. That's a, it is. It's a great fish to eat whole too. I haven't caught one of these since I was a kid. They have these big gums. They got a funny protruding mouth. Show it off. Show out, see how far out it goes. See you, buddy. There's a sheep. There's a sheep. Hundred percent of sheep's head. Johnny, Johnny, that oh, is a black, black drum, drum, baby. baby! Black drum, baby. Okay, you guys so know what that reference is. If you don't know, you need to look it up right now. You gotta type in black drum baby on YouTube. Shout out to Blair Wiggins, one of the OG fishing TV shows. There was one scene where he caught a black drum and he goes, we got a black drum on baby, in that voice. And it's just still to this day, I can't look at a black drum the same way without thinking of him doing it. Good old Blair Wiggins. These fish are so cool. Even these little guys, they have like a little beard. <laughs> they do. You see they got this little beard underneath here. Pretty cool. They look kind of like a sheep's head. They just have the uh, different higher dorsal fins, slender body. And they get monstrous. Those things These get things over will get 30 pounds. pounds. No, 100 pounds, yeah. Okay. In the Carolinas, they could over to 100. Really? In yes. Florida, they only get about 30 pounds. Um, but yeah, there you go. He's got a cute little face on him. Hey man, I'm having fun. We got a variety of species. We got the target species. And guess what? 
we, you know, we didn't really know what we're doing, but we're doing it. And that's the fun part. Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. That's a mangrove, no? Another black drum. Wow, second black drum in a row. About the same size. Cute little guy. Hey, buddy. Okay, baby. This feeling like a black drum. And it's a black drum. I think we found a little black drum nursery hole. So those things get monstrous. And I know a lot of you guys in the past have reached out to me and we filmed together. And uh, you know, a lot of the videos that I filmed on this channel are thanks to subscribers, captains reaching out, charter guys, or just people with cool fisheries. So I really want to catch a giant black drum. So if you guys live in an area where there's giant black drum, please reach out to me. You can email me, I'll have it linked below, because I would love to film a video on a giant black drum. So let's make it happen. So we're gonna make a move. Fish the bridge, fish the docks, we fished the power lines earlier. We're gonna make one last pit stop where Johnny's caught him before. See you guys there. You know, Johnny is hard to mess with. He always fits the butt of his rod like right here, whereas I'm like right here, so I can never mess with him and tap it. Oh, tap, tap. Come on, sheepy. This might be our sheep head. Uh. Oh, dude. Wow. So this thing, these fish don't typically fight that hard, but they, they use the current to their advantage. That is a big old look down jack. A lot of people call them moonfish. That is not what they are, they are a look down. This one here is so deeply gut hooked that um, I'm gonna cut it off and tie another hook. Um, yeah, so we didn't get as many sheep's head as we hoped and planned, but you know what? We set out on a mission, we tried, and we got one. We got a bunch of other different species, and I had a great day. Big thank you to Johnny for taking us out. You guys, like I said, check out his channel below. We're gonna roll some beautiful drone footage by Dennis because he is absolutely killing it with the video. If you guys have noticed that, drop a comment below. Like the video if you haven't already. And I will catch you guys back home in Pompano for a good old catch clean cook. Guys, we got Mr. Sheep's Head making his appearance in Pompano Beach. And you see that slime dripping off of him? I already went ahead and squirted him off, but this guy is still releasing some fluid, so let me get rid of that. A lot of people are intimidated by flaying a sheep's head, and you guys will see why once I start cutting through this fish. But notably, as you can hear my knife running along him, they're very scaly, uh, tough fish to fillet. They kind of prick you. They got all these spines right here. You got to be kind of careful when you're filleting them because you could really nick yourself. Cool thing, I got the seven inch Dextreme right here. You guys have been seeing me use it a lot in the last year. And the cool thing about this knife is you got two edges. You got a serrated side right here, perfect for scaly fish. And then you got your precision side right there. So watch what I'm going to do with this. Right here by the peck fin, I'm going to go in with the tiger edge part of my knife, get through the scales of this sheep's head. I'm gonna continue to use this side of the knife. And this is where a lot of people struggle with sheep's head. They got these thick scales and we're about to get over that rib cage and you guys will see that's what people really don't like about sheep's head. So now I flip my blade over, my edge over, and I'm gonna work up from the tail to the head of the sheep's head. And I'm gonna do this until I get to the backbone of the fish or the center of the fish. Okay. This is the reason people don't like flaying sheep's head. If you take your hand and you lift this flap of meat right here, right along here, sheep's head have a huge rib cage and set of pin bones. What you're gonna to wanna to do is grab with your left hand, tilt your knife slightly up and you gotta break, you gotta break through those pin bones, okay? So my knife is going up and around that rib cage. If you're trying to sit here and saw through it, you're gonna be there all day getting nowhere. Really just go above that rib cage. And some people avoid it actually 
all together, but I like to go over it. So you kind of just trace right over it. And one lock. Look at how much uh, higher and raised that rib cage is compared to where my knife is and where I'm flaying. So if with your normal flay, you know everyone's trying to get through this rib cage or the pin bones. You really got to tilt that knife up or you're never going to get over that rib cage. And what a lot of guys will do is they'll actually start their cut and they'll go from here all the way to the anal fin and they will bypass this entire area. I just like to show you guys this way because then I don't get hay comments saying I wasted any meat. But if you look, this is the area that I would bypass with the rib cage right here. There's really not a lot of meat there. What I get maybe half an inch, quarter inch of meat right above that rib cage. So, um, you know, there's no right or wrong way. You just got to do what's comfortable for you. And I would say compared to most fish, sheep's head actually have a very poor yield. And what I mean by that is if you look at the fillet compared to the fish's body, a lot of the weight of this fish is in its head, his rib cage, and that area. There's not a lot of weight in the fillet itself. You know, and certain fish have better yields than others. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. Moving this side, using that serrated side to get through the scales. And it's nice that way you're not dulling your knife, you know, on a scaly fish. All right, there's the other half. Like I said, not a lot of yield. Look at all of the weight in his head and his rib cage. Okay, guys. Hold on, listen to this. Listen, ready? We're opening up its stomach. You hear that? Sounds like rocks. They actually do eat all these rocks and crustaceans and stuff. Look at this. This is all in its stomach. I know, I'm a little psycho. I love opening up fish stomachs, but you know, it's fun. So check this out. This is an oyster or part of an oyster or a barnacle. You hear that? They go up and they crush, and I, apparently they can digest these rocks and they suck out the little living animal out of them. But his stomach is just chock full of all these little snails and shells and crabs and all these just little crustaceans. If you're gonna use this knife, be very observant of the fact that you do have two edges. So when I skin fish with this knife, just remember you do have an edge on both sides. Line my sheep's head up with the fillet table. And luckily these guys are really easy to skin because they have really thick scales. So went ahead and skinned them out. Another little tip when you're filleting fish, you wanna avoid getting your fish as gross as possible, not getting any of the blood or slime or fresh water on. Put it right back on to the skin of your fish and you can make your you know, pin bone adjustments and your final adjustments on the skin of the fish like so. Okay, lift the little bone. And now we gotta get rid of the pin bone. Okay, so we got rid of the pin bones, got rid of the rib, and now we got our boneless, skinless sheep's head filet. I will see you guys in the kitchen. So check it out. We got the sheep's head filet right there. A very good looking fish, if I do say so myself. Perfect amount of meat for me, Brooke, and Dennis to enjoy a nice dinner. So we're gonna take it back old school and throw a little Chef Paul's on there. Best blackened seasoning in the world. Um, and yeah, just a real nice, simple meal. I got some veggies that I'm gonna show you guys here in a second, but we're gonna blacken this guy up. And you guys notice I also left the bloodline in this fish. I got a saute pan right here, branch and vine, Meyer lemon infused olive oil going into the saute pan right here. We're gonna make a little squash and green shard, I guess just sauteed veg. 
So, got my oil in there. Gonna go in with a healthy amount of garlic. Okay, I'm gonna stop that garlic from overcooking. I'm gonna put in our squash. Stainless steel fry pan right here with some olive oil. Okay, we're gonna do half oil and half butter for our blackened. We're gonna go in with our sheep's head right now into our oil mixture. Three to four minutes each side for our blackened sheep's head right here. Start with the pretty side of the fish so that way when you flip it, it's gonna be up top. These are the roots of the green shard. Um, they take a little bit longer to cook. Nice and crunchy, gonna go in with some of that, as well as some tomato. You guys see that filet starts to turn kind of white um, on one side, so we're gonna flip. And there's that beautiful golden sizzle and that color you would expect with a blackened fish. Oh yeah, baby, look at that. If I see it's getting low on oil or, or butter, I'll put it in there. And you don't have to be afraid of butter because at the end of the day, a lot of it's gonna stay in the pan, but you don't want your fish to dry out as well. When we come over here, we got everything sauteing. Tomatoes are getting nice and soft. These are the leaves of the green shard, and we're gonna go in with this. It's gonna wilt down just like spinach would. And I'm gonna tilt our pan to one side. I'm gonna take that butter and just kind of baste our sheep's head. Let all that delicious flavor that I told you guys to leave in the pan, put that fat back on top of the fish. Because you know what? You deserve it. I'm going to sprinkle in a little bit of apple cider vinegar just to give it that acid pop. So just about that much. Also going to hit it with some fresh cracked pepper for a veg, as well as some salt. Just like spinach, you know, you see how much this stuff shrinks. So you don't want to take it too long or it's pretty much all going to disappear. Look at that. Just listen to that sound. That is a beautiful, beautiful sound. Thank you, Mr. Sheep's Head, for donating your life for tonight's dinner and uh, joining our frying pan. Just look at how vibrant and beautiful all those vegetables are. You got your squash, tomato, the Swiss chard or the green chard, um, the garlic. Wanted to throw some onion in there, but guess what? I was out. Okay, gorgeous piece of our sheep's head right on top. And that is a wrap, folks. There we got our sheep's head on top of our beautiful vegetables right there. Let's dig in. Funny when I don't watch you cook. It's just like a total different experience when I don't know like what I'm eating. Like I used to always film you cooking and like whenever we would feed everyone, everyone would be like, oh, like what is all of this? And now like, I feel that way, Yeah, <laughs> you know? Brooke's parents would walk in the house and, he, and Brian would be like, so what do we have? And Brooke's like, oh, we're gonna have this and this and this, you guys want to drink? And now it's like, she doesn't know what's, what to expect. So we got a 10 out of 10 on the flake test right here. I don't know, I think people are way too picky with fish. I tell you what, you guys have seen, I've been doing YouTube for over six years now. I have literally tried almost every single species there is to try in Florida. If you catch a good, fresh fish, I don't care what it is, and you give it the justice it deserves in the kitchen, it's gonna be good. There are some people out there who would say, sheep's head, that's gross, that lives in the intercoastal, or that, you know, it's a dirty fish. It is far from dirty. It was a great day on the water. We made one fish into a great little meal for the three of us, and I'm super happy about it. Got to surprise Brookie with a nice little fish dinner. Trying to plan out the year and a bunch of epic trips for you guys, like I said, that black drum, if you guys wanna get on big black drum, or if you have any fishery that you wanna showcase or you would really like to film and collaborate on, let's do it. Slide in the DMs, email me, and uh, let's make a trip out of it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Catch you in the next one.